fellow learners, my name is Erica and you're watching Genius R. So, you're probably thinking, ah, oh, this is another boring stuff with a lot of terminologies and words that I don't even understand. Well, that's kind of true, but hear me out. This topic is very interesting and I promise that I made it the easiest way possible for you guys to understand. To provide you the gist of this presentation, I will be going to present it in an organized sequential order so that the information will be much easier to relate to one another. <laughs> that feels like Monica from Friends. I know! <laughs> First, I will be giving the definition of the disease and then move on to the causes, signs and symptoms, risk factors, diagnosis, and then finally the treatment. Now. Have you heard of hemochromatosis? It sounds very intricate, but hemochromatosis just simply means having too much iron mineral in the body. And no, it is far from becoming Iron Man. I, I understood that reference. Hemochromatosis is actually a metabolic disorder in several people. And if it's not properly treated, it may lead to some serious illnesses and conditions, which we'll talk about later. So according to Manish Kathri, a medical doctor in 2020 from WebMD, hemochromatosis or iron overload is a disease where too much iron builds up in the body. But Erica, what is iron and why do we need it? You may ask. Well, iron is a mineral found in certain foods like spinach, shellfish, and organ meats, which serve several purposes like help hemoglobin transport oxygen throughout the body, create red blood cells, and produce certain hormones. This is according to Cleveland Clinic in 2021. So normally, the intestines absorb just the right amount of iron in the body. But in hemochromatosis, it absorbs way too much and it has no way to get rid of it. So the body has no choice but to store the excess iron in certain places like the joints and organs like the liver, heart, the pancreas, and the skin, which in result um, causes damage and therefore poisoning the organs. The medical term hemochromatosis also has meanings from its prefix, suffix, and root word. Hemo means elevated or increased iron in the blood. The root chromat refers to the color which is the darkening of the skin, and osis pertains to a disorder. Now, I will be explaining the condition in a bit deeper and more precise way. So, if we are to observe our red blood cells, we'll notice that it contains millions of copies of the exact same protein called hemoglobin. We all know that hemoglobin binds with oxygen and serves as the oxygen transporter to the tissues in the body. If we take a closer look to the hemoglobin proteins, we'll find that they are comprised of four heme molecules. These heme molecules are connected together with the mineral iron. Now, this iron molecule binds with oxygen, so without iron, it wouldn't be that good as well. Normally, a person loses about 1 mg of iron per day, so it may be from sweat, shedded skin cells, or shedded gastrointestinal cells. Now, in a normal diet, a person takes in about 10 to 20 milligrams of iron per day and absorbs 10% of that, which is about 1 to 2 milligrams of iron. Now, it makes it equal for the gains and losses of iron in the body. So, people with hemochromatosis absorbs an unusually high amount of iron, sometimes as much as 4 milligrams per day, even though we usually only need 1 milligram of iron to even up our losses. Now, this is really bad because it tends to build up over time and by the age of 40s, people with hemochromatosis may have about or more than 20 grams of extra iron in their body. So the normal amount of iron taken by the body is again absorbed in the intestines. But what happens to the extra iron in hemochromatosis? Like what I've said earlier, it deposits in organs and tissues like liver, pancreas, heart, skin, and the pituitary gland. This process of depositing iron in the organs is called hemosiderosis. But why is it so bad? Iron is just a tiny molecule in the body. Well, iron is actually pretty good at generating free radicals through Fenton reaction, which over time, the deposits of iron tend to damage the cells and then create more free radicals, causing cell death, and then further lead to tissue fibrosis or the scarring of the tissues. And we do not want that. There are two types of hemochromatosis, the primary hemochromatosis and the secondary hemochromatosis, each with different causes. 
According to the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute in 2021, primary hemochromatosis is actually caused by a defect in genes that control how much iron is absorbed from food. This form of disease is sometimes called as hereditary or classical hemochromatosis. This form is also much more common than the secondary form of the disease. The genes involved in primary hemochromatosis are called HFE genes. Now, faulty HFE genes cause the body to absorb too much iron. If you inherit two copies of the faulty HFE gene, one from each parent, you are at risk of iron overload and the signs and symptoms of hemochromatosis. But if you inherit one faulty HFE gene and one normal HFE gene, you are a hemochromatosis carrier. Next is secondary hemochromatosis. Now, this is usually a result from another disease or condition, such as certain types of anemia, like thalassemia or sideroblastic anemia. It can also be caused by chronic liver diseases, such as chronic hepatitis C infection, alcoholic liver disease, or non-alcoholic stethiohepatitis. According to Manesh Kathri, a medical doctor in 2021, up to half of people who have hemochromatosis don't get any symptoms. In men, symptoms tend to show up between ages 30 and 50, while women often don't show signs up until they're over 50 or past menstruation. This is because women tend to excrete the extra deposits of iron through menstruation or when giving birth. Symptoms of hemochromatosis include the following, pain in the joints, fatigue, unexplained weight loss, appearance of bronze or gray color in skin, pain in the belly, loss of sex drive, loss of body hair, heart flutter, and a foggy memory. So, hemochromatosis is actually a very common genetic disease in the United States. It is most common in Caucasians in Northern European descent. And I think Filipinos are fortunate because it is less common in African Americans, Hispanics, Asians, and American Indians. Also, primary hemochromatosis is actually much more common in men than in women. So, there are certain diagnostic tests and procedures that can determine whether a person has hemochromatosis. So, the most common are blood tests, which may include transparent saturation tests, serum ferritin level tests, and liver function tests. Transferrin is a protein that carries iron in the blood. The DS test shows how much iron the transferrin is carrying. This helps physicians find out how much iron is in the body. A serum ferritin level test, on the other hand, is done when the TS level is high. This shows how much iron is stored in the body's organs. Lastly, liver function tests are done to check for damage to the liver, since it may be a sign of hemochromatosis. Other diagnostic procedures include liver biopsy, magnetic resonance imaging or MRI, and genetic testing. Treatments for hemochromatosis are actually quite simple and straight to the point. The most common way of managing this condition is through phlebotomy, literally blood levy. In this case though, the red blood cells are taken until the serum ferritin level and the transferrin saturation are decreased, as well as the iron load. Drug treatments can also be used as management for hemochromatosis. One example is nifuroxamine. Now, this drug binds with iron in the blood, making it easier to excrete through urine and therefore lowering the iron load. So, what is the most important nursing consideration to people suffering or at risk for hemochromatosis? The answer is, drum roll please! Health education. Now, if more people are aware and informed with this condition, it may be prevented and treated properly and immediately. Okay, as a quick recap, again, hemochromatosis is a metabolic disorder where too much iron is absorbed by the body. It may be caused by primary genetic causes such as mutations in the HFE gene causing abnormal iron metabolism or via secondary causes like presence of certain diseases or some medical procedures like blood transfusion. Hemochromatosis can lead to complications that affects the liver, heart, pancreas, gonads, and joints. It can also cause bronzing or grayish color of the skin. And finally, the disease can be treated with phlebotomy or drug therapies. I hope you guys enjoyed this presentation and thank you so much for watching!